Okay, recipe number two. Um, this seems like a lot to take care of, but first of all, I love Asian cooking. And one of the great things about it is when you cook in a wok, it happens so fast. The cooking is literally minutes. Uh, the preparation, on the other hand, is a little more. I'm gonna do a beef and oyster sauce. Uh, again, you can go to any market and they'll have uh, a, an area for ethnic foods where they'll have Hispanic foods and they'll have Asian foods and they'll have the sauces. And it's awesome because now uh, you can do oyster sauce, you can make curries. All of this stuff is available. Uh, you don't have to make it from scratch and it's really quite simple. Uh, so what I've done is I've got, I've sliced up my beef here. Uh, I have a variety of vegetables. I'm not going to use all of them. Uh, again, these are just options for people to have, and then I'll show you how I like it specifically. Uh, I'm going to mince this garlic. I've got all the things for the sauce that I want to make. Uh, so right now, uh, I'm going to start with the rice, uh, because the rice is going to take the longest to cook. Uh, generally, if you're cooking for four people, the rice is going to take you about 25 minutes to a half an hour. But once you get it started, it's on your own, that's when you can prepare the rest of your food. So I'm going to show you how to use a really simple rice maker. Uh, I am not a technically advanced person, contrary to some of the roles that I've played. So these kinds of things have always freaked me out. And, and the measuring of stuff kind of freaked me out too. But literally, you can take the bowl of your rice maker uh, and fill the bottom of it, and you will have really enough rice for four people. And you can measure it by taking your finger in, and if it goes to the first joint, you've got plenty. And it's another method that you can use for the water as well. So I'm going to put kind of lukewarm water on. I'm going to rinse my rice. I'm going to clean it. So I'm just going to use my hand as a block and just kind of drain the water out. I'm going to run through it again. Slowly get that dirty water out. It will never come perfectly clean, but you will certainly see a change in it as I'm seeing now. And now I'm going to just put a little bit of water in. And then I'm gonna try and get the rice to level out. And again, I'm gonna use my finger. And if it's somewhere between this joint and the halfway mark, uh, then you'll know that you've got a great measurement. So it doesn't matter how much rice you put in, as long as you've got that separation between the rice and the water, uh, your rice will, will not be too wet. And it will work. And I'm gonna add just a touch more and we are good to go. And if you come around to the front, I can show you how simple uh, working this machine is. I literally press cook start. And you'll see the red light go on. And it will start to tell you, most of them will tell you when you're about 10 minutes out. And you just leave it and you're done. And you will have perfect, perfect rice. It is so simple and easy to use. And in half an hour when the rice is ready, we'll come back and we'll cook this up. It'll take just a couple minutes and you'll be amazed how authentic and, and cool it looks to plate and how wonderful it tastes. Now the rice is nearing its completion. It's about 15 minutes out. Uh, you can actually do this the day before. It depends how long you want your meat to marinate. But I've just literally sliced up a steak. Uh, nothing too thin, nothing too extraordinary. Uh, again, really, really simple. And I put that in a Tupperware container uh, to make the sauce. And I'm gonna take my oyster sauce and I'm gonna add a pretty healthy amount. Uh, I've started to eye it, but I think it's, it's at least between two to two and a half tablespoons. Uh, again, if you make it the first time and you want more oyster sauce, uh, or any sauce, whether it's a curry sauce or whatever, you can also add that when the food is in the wok. But I like to use it as a marinade as well. So I'm gonna add one tablespoon of sugar. And again, depending on the size of the steak, you can use less or more. Again, that's to taste. I use one tablespoon of flour. I'm going to mince this garlic, not mince it, excuse me. I'm going to use a garlic press and I'm going to just put it straight into 
into that. I use four cloves. Depending on the size of the cloves, sometimes depending on the garlic, the cloves might be small and I'll opt to go for five. I don't think you can use too much garlic. Uh, but it's so much better to use fresh garlic as opposed to a garlic powder or something like that. It really does make a huge difference. And here we go. Great. That was really bad what I just did. You're supposed to cut away from yourself. And now I will just add a little bit of water, lukewarm. And you'll see it start to make this sauce, this paste, and that's what it'll marinate in. And that's what it'll initially cook in, in the wok. And then if you want to thicken that up, you can add a little more oyster sauce uh, in the wok, or you can simply pull the meat out and not add as much of the broth that's been created. Okay, and that is finished. I'm going to wash my hands, and now we're absolutely ready to start cooking. And again, I don't advise it until the rice is finished. Okay, see you in a sec. Okay, the rice is just finished. A couple things about a wok. Uh, I've had this wok for a few years. If you can see in the light, it's, it's got a really dark patina. It's called seasoning a wok. Uh, and you don't really wash a wok with any kind of steel wool or soap or anything like that. You rinse it clean. Uh, and so all of the dishes that you cook in this wok kind of help over time flavor everything that you cook. And it's, it, it, it really does matter. So when you get a new wok, uh, take some oil, peanut oil or safflower oil, all for high heat. Uh, just let it cook off. Let that oil cook off and it'll start to color the wok and it'll allow the wok to continue seasoning. So now we're ready to cook. I'm gonna turn my burner on high and this is gonna to have to get really, really hot and you'll see it start to smoke. That's when you know that it's ready. Not heavy smoke, just the very beginning of it lifting off, you know, roughly a minute. Or two. And then this cooking is going to go really fast. We're going to go in with the meat first and we're going to try and spread it out as much as possible so it cooks evenly. And before you even flip the meat, uh, the vegetables will go in and this will take literally five minutes. Again, the preparation for this meal is about 15 minutes. The cooking of the meal is five minutes. And that's starting to feel just about right. And you can just see a really light haze coming off of the wok. About two tablespoons of safflower oil for high heat. Uh, I actually was taught on a wok to use peanut oil, but I have a lot of friends that have peanut allergies, and so I just moved over to this. I try and get the oil as far up on the wok as possible, and then I set it down to really gain some heat. I get my meat. And again, I've set out the utensils that I'm going to need for this. I like to actually use these to try and flip the meat when I'm trying to be really specific at first, and then I move over to a spatula, and we're ready to go. And so I will separate the beef so that it's allowed to individually cook on each side. And then as this starts to warm, and I wish you guys could smell this, it really is amazing. Uh, it's like I've just walked into my favorite Chinese restaurant. So I'm gonna let that cook on each side for a bit. Again, 30 seconds at the most. And then I'll start figuring out where I wanna flip them. And so I'll show you this piece right here. Already you can see that it's starting to look cooked. And I'm gonna start trying to flip these pieces like this. and give them some space so that they can cook. And now I'm gonna forgo the tongs. I'm gonna get my vegetables. Me, I like celery, the green onions, and the mushrooms. 
And I've used a little orange pepper in this one just to give it a little color. And I just start moving it around. Again, spreading it out. There I can see a piece that is not cooked on that side. I just flip it over. No panic. And it's very hard to overdo this. It'll be really clear to you when this is finished because you'll be able to see that the meat is cooked. But I also want to give time for the vegetables to really cook too. The mushrooms and the celery will take the longest to soften. And just keep moving it around. If you don't move it around, the sauce has a tendency to kind of coagulate and can actually burn off. So you really do want to stay active with this once you cook the one side of it. And just flip it over and over and keep working it. Let it sit for a second. You can see some of the sides right here. It's still just a little pink in the meat. Uh, for me with this, uh, it was a big dish for my kids. Uh, and they didn't really want to see the color of the meat. It, it really does not affect the tenderness of the beef either. So it's going to cook it right through. And I would think that we're probably coming up on three to four minutes. You can start to see the mushrooms as they start to break down and cook. I'm going to let that sit there for a second. And then move this over here. Rinse that off and start working this again. So now I know the meal is finished. I'm just going to get it super, super hot. Let the vegetables break down a little more. And one of my favorite things about this dish is plating it. Uh, and it is really, really simple. And I have to say this is one of the first things I ever cooked that got me excited about cooking and made me feel like it was possible to learn how to do and make some of the dishes that I would go to a fancy restaurant for. And I was just shocked uh, that if I followed the directions, how simple it was. Uh, and that it didn't take an incredible amount of time. That is now finished, so I'm going to take it off the heat. I'm going to let it sit there. I'm going to walk right by you guys. I'm going to get a bowl. And I'm just going to plate one dish. But I used one average steak, and that would feed comfortably. That would feed three people. I'm going to get a serving spoon. I'm going to do my rice first. And here you can see my rice is finished. It told me when it was done. I didn't start stir frying until I knew that. And it's just perfect. So I'm going to take the rice here on one side of the bowl. And it is nice to have a good amount of rice. Uh, but there's all kinds of things you can do. You can fill cups up with this and make pyramids. And there's really interesting ways to kind of showcase what is obviously a really simple dish. Here I'm going to get some of the beef and the vegetables. And I'm just going to lay that along the side here. Make sure I get the sauce. And what I've always found really surprising, because I've usually only ever used celery as a vegetable in chicken dishes. I don't know why, it's just the recipes that I've gotten. But it's just amazing contrast to the savory quality of the beef and then the crunchiness of the celery. It's just awesome. And it's that simple. And here I'll bring it around to the side here. And that's the dish. Beef and oyster sauce and steamed rice. This is how it's done. Now this is how it's done.